All right, so here is just the general overview of my shelves. I have one little wooden bookshelf over there that was built for me. And then I have three of the Billy bookcases from Ikea in white. So those are my shelves. Here's the overview. Let's take a closer look now. So we'll start over here with my little wooden bookcase. So up on the top shelf, like on top of the actual shelf, is all of my TBR books or my unread books. So most of the books on my actual shelves I have read. There is a few on there that I've either DNF'd but I'm keeping because I want to give them a second chance or that I just, that I think there's like three that I also haven't read yet but I don't have any plans to read them anytime soon. I'll talk about those more when we get to it but for right now this is my TBR shelf, the little six books that I have up there and then honestly by the time this video goes up I might have read some of these already so it might be different but at the time that I'm filming this that is my physical TBR. Also on the left over there I've got a little fairy so I really like little fairy figurines so you're gonna see a lot of little fairy figurines on my shelves. I also have these like gemstone I don't even know what you call this but these are like bookends. I think they're really pretty and I really like them. It's like a geode almost, but they're really, really heavy duty. So I have one on either side holding up my TBR books and then this little fake plant from Ikea. This top shelf here is just my classics and historical fiction books. So I do have one mug over here full of my bookmarks and stuff. I have a couple bookmark mugs, but this is one of them. So it's just got like a bunch of my random bookmarks. So that's where I go, obviously, whenever I need a bookmark. I didn't need to say that. This can actually move down here. I don't know why I still had that up there. But yeah, I've just got some random classics. So this one I just have because it's got tulips on it. It's a really old book, but my mom gave this to me. It was on my grandma's bookshelf and we're very Dutch. So she gave me this. So I figured I'd keep that. I think it's cute on my classic shelf. Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> I don't know if this is like going to change the audio at all from like where I am. But anyways, I've got one of my favorite classics, Fahrenheit 451, in this cute little edition. I really like this edition. It's a mass market paperback, but I really like the cover of it. And then I have these Penguins classic editions with the little red top on them. I just really like those. I just have this little collection. So I have Pride and Prejudice. I have Wuthering Heights, which I have not read yet. I have... Keats <laughs> poems and then I have Little Women. So those are the classics that I have so far. I haven't read the Keats poems or Wuthering Heights but I do have plans to. I think I'm gonna spend the summer reading some poetry and like just sitting outside. <laughs> and then The Importance of Being Earnest which is my favorite play ever. The Book Thief and then I have my Veronica Speedwell mystery series Paperbacks which is one of my favorite series of all time. Um, I don't know why but when they got to the eighth and ninth book like the height difference changed so I'm not sure what that's about but they still all like match other than that but like yeah it's just a little the size is a little different but that's okay this shelf is kind of my like thriller mystery horror shelf I don't read a lot of those mostly if I read a thriller I will just get it from the library but I do have the first two Stalking Jack the Ripper books because those are my favorites in the series. If I ever reread the series, it'll be these two. I would like to get them in paperback, but I only have them in hardcover. If I find them really cheap somewhere, I'll buy the paperbacks, but I have the hardcovers for now. And I have Gone Girl, which is probably one of my favorite thrillers of all time. This one and Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. But I have dog-eared and like highlighted in this one so that's why I haven't replaced it with the paperback. Bunny by Mona Awad, the Mindfuck series which I absolutely love and I really want to reread and then A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I only have the first one because I would ever only ever reread the first one. Then I have this little gnome here that my friend Casey got for me. I call him Pappy. She got this for me when we were in high school so he just stays and protects my books. <laughs> And then I do have a couple gems on this shelf as well. I have an amethyst and a citrine that just kind of sit there. I really like decorating my shelves with gems and little fairy <laughs> figurines. So you're going to see a lot of that. 
And then these bottom two shelves are just my graphic novel shelves. So I've got the like bigger, thicker graphic novels up on the top shelf with my little crocheted mushroom guy. Um, his name is Gus. He is also from Casey. So she made me, she just got into crocheting and she made that and gave it to me. So he's on my bookshelf. And then my like comic book sized graphic novels are down there on the bottom. And I do have a little candle that says book club that I've never used because it's, I think it's just too cute. So I have it there kind of holding up those heavy graphic novels. All right, then we have my like fantasy and fantasy romance shelves. So normally I would go just like one full shelf, but I have moved things around so that my Sarah J Mass books are not on the exact same shelf, but they're side by side. So I have like displayed at the top there um, some really cool additions. I have, I can't remember whose dust jacket these are from. I'll find them and I'll leave them linked in the description down below. But I also have this fairy up here that I painted. Then I have this little Valeris Knights candle and then the little Knight Court sigil up at the top. And then on this shelf, I have my collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses, a little candle, a little Valkyrie um, print that Lachlan got me. And then the fairy loot editions of the two First Crescent City books. So here these ones are up at the top. So I've just got the whole series up here so there's a court of thorns and roses this is really hard to film just because of how high it is so hopefully it's not too wavy and then a court of mist and fury which is obviously my favorite book of all time so i've got it displayed out because i love it a court of wings and ruin i love these dust jackets they're so pretty a Court of Frost and Starlight. The um, foiling on it is really cool. And then A Court of Silver Flames, which this is one of my favorite covers. <laughs> so then the um, collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses has this like special slip casing on it. Let me take it out quick. So this one has like gold foiling and it's Feyre in the forest. And then on the back cover, there's a wolf in the forest. So I really like having this one and it's just such a pretty addition. Same with these fairy loot ones. I, they come in like a special slip case for it that has like an artificial signature. Like that is Sarah J Mass's signature, but they have it printed on the back. Okay, let me take this out as well. So here's the dust jacket and then it's got pretty moon sprayed edges. Here's what it looks under the hard or under the dust jacket I mean. And then these really pretty end pages as well. now onto the actual shelf so I have this little thing that I got from Lachlan which is like just a little A Court of Thorns and Roses tin and it has all of my like Sarah J Mass stickers in it so there's quite a few so it's kind of nice to have this little thing to hold them all in and I just have it displayed up here I have my A Touch of Magic Designs um, Throne of Glass covers and then next to that, my Nerdy Ink dust jacket covers. So here's Assassin's Blade. Throne of Glass. Crown of Midnight. Air of Fire, which is one of my favorite covers. I love Manon and Abraxos on this one. Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn,
and then Kingdom of Ash. And then these are the Nerdy Ink dust jackets. So these are the original designs though because they changed the designs and so these are the original ones. And I think these are like going out of print now. So I'm happy to have these. And it has like the map printed on the little flap here. Here's Throne of Glass. Crown of Midnight. Air of Fire. Queen of Shadows. Empire of Storms. Tower of Dawn. And Kingdom of Ash. And then right below that, I have this mini bookshelf that my friend Maggie got me that has all of Sarah J Mass's series on it. Um, it doesn't have Catwoman. That's the only one it doesn't have, but I'm kind of okay with that. But it's cute because it's just like a little mini bookshelf. And then I have the tour edition of House of Sky and Breath. And then the two Illumicrate editions. So this is the reverse dust jacket for the Illumicrate edition. The really gorgeous sprayed edges. And then the gorgeous end pages with La Haba. This is what's under the dust jackets for the Illumicrate ones. So they have gold foiling on it. Here's the end pages for this one. And then the pretty gold or um sprayed edges. And then these ones also come with page overlays in them, but they are pretty spoilery, so I'm not gonna show those, but they do come with page overlays. And then here's the alternate dust jacket for that. I just have this one on a random copy of House of Sky and Breath. And then I just have my normal copies of it, my paperback copies, and then I do have a copy of Catwoman right here. This little thing is, it's intended to be a little flower pot, but it's got Bryce and Searing on it, but I have all of my Sarah J Mass bookmarks in this one, which I think is kind of cute. I have my Throne of Glass shelf. So I have the I have, uh, Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight just in the original paperbacks. I found them at a resale store and I just couldn't leave without them. And then I have the collector's edition of Throne of Glass. So this too comes in a special slip case. I do have the very original dust jacket of Throne of Glass. This is the original style of the covers when it was first published. And these are obviously out of print now. I really like the um, like original covers, but this is like the actual OG cover. So it's kind of cool that I have that because they're really rare. I also have this little Road to Terracin candle, which I just, I don't ever want to burn this, but I just have it facing out because I think it's cute. And then the new paperbacks, which I am in the process of rereading the whole series and annotating them. I just have to finish my reread of Kingdom of Ash. And then I also have this little pop socket that says Rattle the Stars that came off of my phone, <laughs> but I wanted to keep it because it's still cute. <laughs> So I just have it sitting up here. And then all of the original cover hard covers I have over there with another little fairy. There is this um, alternate dust jacket or like reverse dust jacket. And this one does have art on the end pages. That was back when exclusive editions of Sarah J Mass books had like cool stuff to it not just bonus chapters. On this shelf I have my Akatar books so I have the 
A Court of Thorns and Roses coloring book. I have this little thing that Brandon made me. It's a, like a coaster, basically, but it's Feyre and Reese. I just have it sitting on this little like mini easel. I do have a signed arc or advanced reader copy of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I got this in a trade with someone on Twitter so many years ago, and I'm so grateful to have it. I do wish I had one of A Court of Mist and Fury since it's my favorite book ever, but it's signed. It is personalized to someone else. Let me find the page. But it is signed, so it's kind of cool to have an arc of A Court of Thorns and Roses. Then I have all of the original paperbacks, and I have this paperback, which I got in Minneapolis when I visited, like, all of my book friends, and then I had them all sign it, kind of like a yearbook. I love my friends so much, but yeah, I just keep that in here, and I just, this copy is just so special because I bought it when I was with my friends. Then I have the original cover hardcovers of the Akatar series. This one has like the, like this protective sheet around it because it is a signed edition. So that one is signed. And then this copy is my defaced copy that I have like heavily annotated, I like painted my own stuff on it. And wrote in like very heavily annotated. It's my little key. I have a signed book plate in this one. But yeah, I do have a flip through of this where I show like all of my annotations and stuff in it. But yeah, I went all out with this <laughs> copy of it. Some of these are also like special editions that have art on the end pages, which I could do a tour of all of my like Sarah J Mass collections like more in depth if you're interested in that. Let me know in the comments. And then I have page overlays in this as well in, in all of these. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to see like more in depth of all of my exclusive editions and page overlays and just like everything you know for Sarah J Mask because I did show a lot of it today but if you're interested in seeing like more in depth of it um let me know then I have this alternate dust jacket that kind of matches the original covers for A Court of Silver Flames this is my annotated copy as well I also did paint on this one then I have the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition paperback of A Court of Silver Flames. I love this. I wish they would do the whole series in this like black and silver theme, but I also recently reread this one and heavily annotated in this one as well. Then I have the um, A Touch of Magic Designs Akatar dust jackets as well. So the Court of Thorns and Roses. Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, A Court of Frost and Starlight, and A Court of Silver Flames, which again, one of my favorite alternate dust jackets. I have some more like gems and stuff just sitting on my bookshelf here and then I have another bookmark mug so this one is Magnolia Parks themed it's like the London skyline that's in the back of um the Magnolia Parks covers and I just have more <laughs> um of my bookmarks I don't know why I had struggled with that this copy of Empire of the Vampire which this dust jacket was gifted to me by Lachlan and so was this whole everything everything was gifted to me by Lachlan um the actual book itself was gifted to me from Lachlan the note was printed out on paper though not in like the usual Amazon stuff which was kind of weird but I taped it in there and then she also signed and like wrote a little cute note in here um when she came and visited for Christmas so I have that one I do have the paperback, which I got from Sahar, and it is literally, look at this, 
This is the floppiest book I have ever seen in my entire life. I can't. <laughs> it's so great. Then I have the Nevernight series by Jay Kristoff. Um, this one is not, it's just the hardcover. There's nothing special to it. But for God's Grave, I have the signed first edition. And so it's got this page, which is signed. But he also did a doodle, which he does not do on every single copy. So it's kind of cool that I got a little doodle. <laughs> and then same with Dark Dawn. I have the signed first edition. No doodle on this one. <laughs> I have Six of Crows and the Shades of Magic series. I got these all in paperback. More amethyst gems and stuff down here. I've got the Wayward Children series. I've got the Night Circus in the like regular paperback. And then I also have it in this like pretty UK edition, which I really love. And then I have the Starless Sea also in this pretty UK edition. I way prefer this cover to the US paperbacks. And then I've got this stunning hardcover of The Starless Sea. This is one of my favorite books of all time. So I've got that. The Winter Night trilogy in paperback, the Caraval series in paperback. I have this copy of The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which I kind of wrote in the beginning, which I think is really cute. I have a paperback and a hardcover of Never by Jessa Hastings. I was included in this like PR package for Never because I beta read it. I think this is so pretty. I love the art style. And it has the map of Neverland on the end pages, which is just so gorgeous. And then in that PR package, I also got this little compass this little tiny vial of like glitter which is super cute and then this little candle that says the lost girl and it smells it smells so good <laughs> this shelf just has some of my like witchy magic-y like whimsical kind of books so i have the first book in the raven boys series which is also signed i have my tj clune books um and then some other like paperbacks i've got the international paperback of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, so I could get the paperback before it was technically released. This copy of Assistant to the Villain that has like the red sprayed edges, I really enjoyed this book. The OG cover of A Dowry of Blood, which I hate that I have like these neon orange tabs in here, so whenever I do a reread of this, I will be re-tabbing and re-annotating in it. I'm going to read it again this fall. And then I have the first printing editions of Rachel Griffin's books. So they have like a special hardcover, like pretty nature stuff all on this one. This one was my favorite of her books. So I have the like feathers and stuff. And then I did get a art print of the two characters, which is really cute. And then same with Bring Me Your Midnight. I have an art print of the two, and then it has like the map printed on the end pages. The art print. And then the special casing for it, which is really cute. Then I have another one of these geode bookends, which I really love. And then my little fairy figurine here is from Camden when I visited the UK and then I just have this little bowl of like polished rocks and gems and stuff which I think is cute in this little wooden bowl okay this bottom shelf is kind of covered by this like stack of books that I've unhauled but I can't really move these because there's just a lot of them over here but this is my nostalgia shelf so Twilight, The Host, The Hunger Games, and Divergent shaped my high school years like Twilight especially, I was absolutely obsessed with it. I had so many posters and so many t-shirts and just so much merch. I I was a Twi hard for sure. Um, Shatter Me is not really super nostalgic for me. I just couldn't fit it anywhere else on my shelves. That like made sense. So I just put it down here. But yeah, Hunger Games, Divergent, I absolutely love those. I have a little Mockingjay pin that my high school English teacher gave me because she knew how much I loved it. <laughs> and then over in this corner, I just have like books from my childhood, the Little Match Girl, a Magic Treehouse book, a little golden book about kittens. 
And then this book that my mom gave me, which I would save this book in a fire because she like wrote and highlighted things in it. She gave it to me for like my high school graduation. And it's just like pretty much the sweetest thing ever. So mom, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> So I have, again, some more, like, gems and stuff that my mom just recently got me, which are really... This is just, like, all fantasy romance books. There's nothing... There's no, like, special editions or anything. I mean, I have annotated in these two and in these. Just um, my fantasy romance shelf. I do have the original edition of A Dawn of Onyx, which I absolutely love this fan row. I don't know if the glare, if you can see it. But then I also have the very similar traditionally published edition but yeah I DNF'd A Light in the Flame but I do want to give it a second chance eventually I it's not that I wasn't liking it I mean I was just kind of bored with it but I want to reread the whole everything eventually so I'll reread those and then I'll get to this one but I did DNF this one about halfway through and then Fear the Flames is, this is like going to be like an early manuscript copy because it got picked up by a traditional publisher and there's going to be like some pretty heavy edits. So it's going to be like a whole different book basically when it comes out. So I'm really happy I have this like OG self-published copy because I'm sure the cover is going to be different and there's going to be like just a lot of changes to the story, scenes that are added, a lot of editing. So it's kind of cool that I have this. And then Blood Mercy, I also DNF that one, but I think I would eventually give it a second chance, so I'm just keeping it on my shelf. Then I have this little fairy sitting on a rock that my mom got me, which is really cute, and you might be wondering, like, what is this random chunks of yarn? Um, listen, I am a sentimental bitch, and this is from when Lachlan visited for Christmas. This is the yarn she picked out to knit her blanket, because my mom taught her how to knit. And when she left, it was still sitting in my living room, these little tiny scraps. So I've kept them and put them on my shelf. Another cute fairy figurine sitting on some roses. Another fake plant. I have the original cover editions of the Bargainer series, which I really like these editions so much more than the new covers. So I'm glad I have these. Here's another book that I DNF'd, but I do want to give a second chance to, The Book of Azrael. This was actually a gift to me from my friend Rachel, and I know she has read this one and she liked it. She also DNF'd this one. We were going to buddy read this, and then we both just weren't feeling it, but I definitely want to give it a second chance. And then, of course, my Zodiac Academy books. I went through a huge obsession with this series. I haven't gotten the eighth book yet because I'm waiting for the series to actually finish. And then once it does, then I'll read the eighth and the ninth, which is supposedly the final book. Okay, here we have another little cute gem. And then the first two Kingdom of the Wicked books. So this one is a bookish box edition. Whoops. Um, I do really like the end pages on these. It came with like little tarot cards, which I think there's one in the back here too. Yeah. And then it's got like special foiling on the cover. And then I also have page overlays in this one. That's what this little card is for. I don't have the third book because I really didn't like it. It was very disappointing for me. So if I reread the series, I'm just skipping the third book. <laughs> I have the collector's edition of The Cruel Prince, which comes in this special slip case, which is really pretty. And then it's like a velvet, I don't even know what you call this. I call it velvet, but and then black sprayed edges and then awesome character art. Knife to the throat, baby. I love Cardin Juden. Oh my god, what? Jude and Cardin? <laughs> I love Jude and Cardin, oh my god. Then I have the Cruel Prince series. I have the Barnes & Noble edition of uh, Curse for True Love. I took the dust jacket off because I don't really like the dust jacket and I wanted to see the special like foiling underneath. I have this stunning, I think this is Waterstones edition or just the UK hardcover edition of A Curse for True Love. Maybe it is from Waterstones, I don't even know. But I just think that this style of cover fits the series so much better than the US edition. It's like a little storybook. And then I have the apple, which I'm so happy about because there was like different things in the center that you could get, like a fox, a wolf, or a knife, and the apple for Jax. 
absolutely stunning. I'm so glad that that's what I got. <laughs> and the two, um, I, I annotated in both of these as well, but these fit, like these covers fit the series so, so much better than the US editions. And my Strange the Dreamer duology, I have Bella Donna here, which is the first printing edition. So it has the special hardcover case. And then these hollow vows and these twisted bonds with my little fairy figurine. This is my favorite one, I think. I just love her. And then down here, my like sci-fi shelf. So I have a Build-A-Bear of like a Ted Lasso <laughs> character. Um, it's just Build-A-Bear though, but in like Ted Lasso outfit. Um, my friend Maggie got that for me because I love the show Ted Lasso. And then this is like my sci-fi kind of shelf. I didn't really, this kind of... Kind of a little bit of everything here but mostly it's like sci-fi stuff i don't really know but yeah i just have those down there <laughs> this is actually an arc that i won off of a goodreads giveaway so i'm glad that i got the paperback for that okay so up at the top there i have my harry potter chest that my hardcovers came in as well as this little owl post it's like a page from the book with a little owl painted on it and then i have this edition of deathly hallows which comes with a slip case and it's like got an alternate dust jacket to it i'll show that in a second and then that gray thing on top holds my hermione wand which i'll show in a second as well and then on the side of my shelf my in-laws got me this little nine and three quarters sign with little baby hedwig and then this actually like lights up in different colors and stuff so that's pretty cool so here's the um, Deathly Hallows. I found this at a rummage sale for 50 cents and I just thought it was so cool because it's got this cool dust jacket with like the golden trio riding a dragon. And then end pages. And it's got this special page in it too. And this is my Hermione replica wand which is from Harry Potter world that my friend Casey got for me when she went when we were in high school so I've never been to Harry Potter world I would love to go someday because it looks so magical but I do have Hermione's wand then I have the nerdy ink dust jackets of the Harry Potter series so here's the Sorcerer's Stone Chamber of Secrets Prisoner of Azkaban. Goblet of Fire. Order of the Phoenix. Half-Blood Prince, and the Deathly Hallows. I have this cute little blue raven which I got from my friend Mel from Melbine's Fix. I have the first three books in paperback in that edition I don't know why <laughs> and then I have this cool edition with like the Hogwarts castle kind of and the alternate covers for the series which I'm rereading in the paperbacks and annotating in those so like it has these cool covers and then I'm like annotating as I go as I read the series and then this is the interactive edition. I only have the first one. I think the first three are out, but they have like really cool like artwork and stuff and little like things like you can open, like there's a letter in here which you can open and stuff like that. Diagon Alley, which you can unfold. It's just really cool, really cool edition.
Then I have my fanfic shelf. So almost all of these, except for all the young dudes, were handmade and gifted to me by my friend Mel from Melbine's Fix. Um, she literally made me cry when she offered to make me this copy of Manacled because I was in such an emotional state after reading it and I loved it so, so much. And when she offered to make it for me, I was like, you've got to be joking. It was so nice of her and so incredible. And yeah, she's made so many copies of fanfics for me. So she did, these are all little paper cranes that she's made, which I didn't want to throw away because like, how cute is that? So I've displayed them in this little cup and then I strung some up on the shelf. She also got me this little Draco figurine, which is adorable. So let's show these, shall we? So Remain Nameless is probably my favorite fic that I've read so far. I love it so much. So it's got a ribbon bookmark with a little like slice of blueberry pie. Oh, I have this bookmark that she also made for Remain Nameless and it's got like tabs on it because when I reread it, I will be annotating. I've already started to like personalize it and make it my own. Printed some pictures. And then I have like my whole annotation system all set up and ready to go. And when I reread this, I will be annotating. Here's the disappearances of Draco Malfoy with another ribbon bookmark with a little snake. Breathman's Battle Scars, which was a buddy read for us, and I got to annotate as I read this one. So this one's full of my annotations and stuff. Loved this fic. And then Manacled. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. And it has another ribbon bookmark with a little paper crane. And then I also did reread this one and annotated it. Look at these end pages. But yeah, I annotated in this one pretty heavily because I love it so, so much. All of these fanfics can be read for free on AO3, so you don't have to have like a physical copy of them. You shouldn't buy physical copies of them. It's lucky that, you know, Mel is kind enough to want to gift them to me just because she knows how much I love to annotate. So she's made them for me so that when we buddy read, I can annotate in them. I have all the young dudes. I have In Silence and Submission. Um, a Senlithian Dramini collaboration, which I think is just a bunch of short stories, and there's like art throughout it, which is really cool. We're in a paperback fanfic, um, like book club where we buddy read books, so this was our first one of the year for that. And I annotated in this one. Next, we're going to be buddy reading Measure of a Man. So I haven't started this one yet, but it's so pretty. This is the first volume. Here's the second volume. And then the third volume with Draco. And we're also doing a buddy read of Chasing the Sun, which is a Snape and Hermione fanfic which is out of my comfort zone I'm a Dramini girly till I die but I'm so excited to branch out in my pairings and I feel like I'm gonna love this one and then this one a season for setting fires is one of Mel's old binds that she just was like getting rid of because she was clearing room on her shelves so she offered it up to our little book club and I haven't read this one yet but I'm excited and it's got a little snake ribbon bookmark as well and I have this candle from Bath and Body Works, which smells like Draco. Oh, it smells so good. Um, Lachlan got me this for Christmas and she put like a bunch of different Draco stickers on it, which is really cute. Then I have a little Hedwig stuffed animal, which is also from Mel. But yeah, thank you Mel so much for hand binding and gifting me all of these copies of all of these fix. I'm so excited to have these. Then we have my romance shelves. So there's nothing like too 
particular or special about these. I just have a little romance candle up there and a little fairy reading a book and a little, you know, flower woman. <laughs> On the second shelf, it's like kind of emotional romances. Um, I do have my Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates books, which I have heavily, heavily annotated. Um, so the first four I have in the original self-published editions, and then they stopped making those editions, but they still make the original style covers. So that's why the fifth book is like extra tall compared to the others. And then the Boys of Tommen series right next to it, this like ombre spine, they redid the covers and only the first printing has the ombre spine. So I have... I have them up here specifically because I wanted the ombre spine but I have not read Into the Dark the third Magnolia Parks book and I have not read Saving Six and Redeeming Six because I know they're super duper emotional books and I just need to take a break from like books that are gonna make me cry and make me sad so those three books I have not read yet they should be on my physical TBR shelf but I have no plans to read those anytime soon it'll be months before I get to those um, so I just put them on the shelf right away. Then I have my favorite Mariana Zapata books. These are the original covers. So I've got From Luke Up With Love, The Wall of Winnipeg in Me, and Culty, which I'll have, I, maybe Culty doesn't have another cover, but they did redo the covers for From Luke Up With Love and The Wall of Winnipeg in Me, and I like these covers better, so I'm happy to have those. And then some other these aren't these aren't emotional romances it's mostly like from here over is the emotional ones then I have my dark romance shelf which is like half Penelope Douglas books so there's that I love Penelope Douglas there's only been one book that I haven't liked of theirs but I've got like the Haunting Adeline books the There Are No Saints series duet I don't know if it has a Sinners duet maybe yeah, these are all like pretty dark slash taboo romances on the very bottom shelf, I have like my emotional reads, like my Taylor Jenkins Reid books, my Frederick Bachman books, my Sally Rooney books, um, and then like pretty much anything that just like makes me emotional. And then I have after this normal people scripts, right here is the divide. Um, I have like my nonfiction books. So I have a book about Jack the Ripper. And then mostly I have like field guides to wildflowers and butterflies and birds and trees and stars and stuff like that. And then I have a book of poetry by Mary Oliver. And then this random box right here is just full of different cards and stuff. When I was cleaning out my desk drawers, I didn't have anywhere else to put this and there was space on the shelf. So I just stuck it here. I don't know that it's going to stay there for now, but it's just like different cards and stationery and stuff like that. That um, was quite the tour. Um, I was pretty in-depth. I think it's the most in-depth I've ever gone on a bookshelf tour. So I hope you liked, you know, I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know if you want to see anything else like more in-depth, like maybe like an in-depth tour of all of my Sarah J Mass books because I have a lot. I have quite the collection there. I did try to go a little bit more in-depth this time so you can see everything, but... Yeah, that is my bookshelf. I absolutely love it. I come in here and just stare at them sometimes, so it's pretty great. I love my shelves. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a blue heart emoji down in the comments down below. And don't forget to click subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Also, I do have a Patreon if you're looking for extra content from me. I'll leave that linked down in the uh, description down below as well. I have a book room tour going up on there so you can see like everything and get a tour of like the whole the whole book room everything <laughs> like my desk and my supplies for annotating and for like my planner and stuff and like all of my decorations on the wall and stuff like that so if you want to see that you can become a member of my patreon and become a valkyrie I would love to have you and thank you again so so much for watching this video I really appreciate it and I will see you all in my next one bye